Hello, welcome to this third video in the series of Introduction to the Derivative. We've seen how to calculate it using a limit in two different ways, and we've seen some concept slides about why is it something that we are even interested in calculating. And what we're leading to is the ability to be able to calculate it in a simpler manner. And so, first up, we want to take the second calculation method where we have h going to zero as our limit and have that be something that is adaptable to any value of x. So instead of just specifically being geared towards just one particular x value, x equals a, I want to have a formula that I can plug in and say, what about x equals seven? What about x equals nine? Back and forth. Like I should be able to find anything I want if, I, if it's possible. And so that's what we look at in this video the derivative as a function, okay? That number a should be able to vary and be anything you want in that second calculation technique where we had um, f prime of a being equal to the limit as h goes to zero of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. Now rip out the a and put in an x. x is your input and your output is the slope of the tangent line. This is the definition of the derivative as a function of x and so we'll use this to calculate the derivative at any value of x okay so we have a new function input is the x value output is the tangent line slope okay the derivative of f now we need for this limit to exist okay so we can't, sometimes you can't do it and so that sometimes when you can't that what, what happens then the limit not existing would mean then that the function is you can't take the derivative of it okay and the way that's verbalized is in the word differentiable the function is is called differentiable if it exists and not differentiable if it doesn't exist okay um and that's differentiable at a point but then we also we have differentiable on an interval okay and so just like we had continuity at a point and continuity on an interval now we have differentiable at a point and then differentiable on an interval would be as long as you're differentiable at all numbers that are inside that interval. Okay, let's go back to that very same function that showed up in the first video in this series, this, this cubic 2x cubed minus 5x. And now I want to be able to calculate the slope of the tangent line at any value of x. Now just that negative one like we did twice. What about at any value? And so we go to the definition of the derivative with the x in there, and now it's our job to evaluate this limit. And what comes out of this is a function. And then into that function, I can plug an x, and I'll interpret the output of that function as the slope of the tangent line. All right, here we go. So f of x plus h, it means replace x with x plus h. Just like we did with the, the negative one plus, uh, um, negative one plus h, here we are, x plus h, and so, uh, rip out the x and put in the x plus h. Use parentheses though because, you know, it's a, it's a binomial that's going in the place of a monomial. So parentheses is definitely necessary. And so we have to cube x plus h. Can't just cube the x and cube the h. Doesn't work that way. Okay, we have to take x plus h times x plus h times x plus h. Three copies of it. And uh, last time we actually grinded it out and, and multiplied, you know, multiplied it all the way out. I want you to know there's a tool that you can use to help you when trying to raise a binomial to a to a nice positive integer value. It's called Pascal's triangle. Okay, Pascal's triangle um, will be able to give you what the coefficients are in the expansion. Okay, and so if you're trying to take x plus y and square it, you get x squared plus two x y plus y squared. One to one for the coefficients. If you're trying to take x plus y and cube it, you get x cubed plus three of the x squared y's plus three of the x y squared plus y cubed. One, three, three, one are the coefficients. And while the one variable is going down in exponent in power, the other one's going up in power. Now we can keep on going with the fourth and the fifth. This is Pascal's triangle. It's, it has many uses. Okay, this is only one of them. Um, and we're, we're taking a binomial and we're expanding it. Okay. So we can use this then to say, okay, you want me to cube x plus h? No problem. Um, I'll just take this and one, three, three, one, 
and I'll have those as my coefficients. I'll start with x squared, and then enter, I'm start with x cubed and have an x squared and an x, and then no x at all. And then I'll bring in the h, and it just works out perfectly that we have exactly that that um, x plus a x plus y quantity cube with all the y's replaced with h's. It's beautiful. Okay, have that guy handy. It helps you. Okay, and so we then distribute the two, distribute the negative five, and we have the first half of the numerator, 2x cubed and 6x squared h and 6xh squared and 2h cubed. Distribute the minus five, minus 5x, and minus 5h. All right, great. So then from this, we are to subtract. What do we subtract from this? We subtract f of x from this. I have, it, I have them in red, color-coded in red on purpose here, and I'm going to add these two by, you know, by um, using, you know, um, vertical addition, basically. I have 2x cubed, and I'm taking away the 2x cubed. They go away. The 5x, that's negative. I'm taking away a negative 5x. That's going to be plus. It's going to go away. Everything that's left has an h in it. I'm going to highlight that h. This is my numerator. This is f of x plus h minus f of x in a nice concise write-up of it. For, to this, I'm supposed to divide by h. I'm supposed to divide this by h and take a limit as h goes to zero. Okay, we can factor out this h, and now I'm ready to cancel the h from the, you know, we can't do this limit with that h in the denominator. The whole goal is to cancel the h from the denominator. I need the numerator to have all factors of h. So I can factor that h out and then cancel. So this is it. And I cancel. Immediately I have this polynomial that's left over. My job, I'm taking the limit as h goes to zero. I don't have any issue of plugging in h equals zero now. That term goes away, just highlighting where the h is at. Why is it only that h that's in green? There's a whole other h that's right there that should be in green too. Sorry about that. <laughs> but yeah, those terms go away. You're left with 6x squared minus 5. This is a function that you can plug a number into, and it won't spit out the y value. It'll spit out the derivative value. It'll spit out the slope of the tangent line. We did it for negative 1. And what, what we got out of that was a 1. Right? Negative 1 squared is 1 times 6 is 6. Take away 5 is positive 1. But now we can do it for any value. You can do it for 0. Slope is negative 5 at 0. We can do it for 1. The slope will be 1 again. And so we can we can find out where it's equal to zero at. We can solve and and find out where it's equal to zero. And we're going to figure out why we care about where the tangent line slope is zero at. This function is powerful. It gives us the ability to to calculate in a faster manner all of the rates of change of the function at any value of x. Okay. All right, great. Um, let's try it again for another function. Um, but in the interest of time, I don't want this video to get too long. So um, let's cut this video and have one more video where we do another one of these, and then we look at um, increasing and decreasing um, of the function. I'm trying to compare the graph of the function to the graph of the derivative. And then also we'll look at uh, what does it mean for a function to not be differentiable? How can this limit not exist? Okay. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Nakai Rimmer. Uh, please like and subscribe, and I will uh, comment down below if you need any help. Please reach out to me. I'm happy to help you through this journey. I'll see you in the next video.